Good morning. How are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to review a hand sent in by Ate. This is a hand from Five No Limit Online. And without further ado, let's check it out. All right, so in this spot, Hero has King-10 offsuit, faces an open raise from another gun, and Hero decides to call. Now, in this situation, and just in general, I hate giving the advice to fold, because folding is so boring, but sometimes it's definitely the right play. So in this situation, let's look at our options. We can fold, we can call, or we can 3-bet in this spot. Well, the first thing I ask myself is, could I call profitably? And the issue with calling here, like Hero did, is that if you call, very high probability that you go multi way to it. And that's partially because the environment, you're playing five no limit online. That's partially because there's four players that can take position on you. And once you get one caller, then you get a lot of callers. So I think in this situation, it's very, very likely that this is going to go multi-way. And I don't think King 10 offsuit is going to perform particularly well in a multi-way pot, particularly one where we're most likely not going to have position. So I don't particularly love calling. And if I don't love calling, then my options are between folding and three betting. Now, I don't think three betting against an under the gun open and Razor makes a ton of sense in full ring. I just simply think that range is going to be too strong. We have King 10 offsuit. It's not going to do as great as I'd like. And as such, I think folding here is going to be just, just fine. I think calling here is a little too optimistic. And one of the biggest issues that players have, and not just in the micros, just in general, is they mash too much marginal nonsense into their preflop ranges. And then all of a sudden they wonder why the heck they're in so many tough spots postflop. Well, I'll give you a hint. If you clean up your preflop stuff, postflop becomes a little bit easier. And of course, it's easy to go too much the other way with that and get too nitty preflop, and that's not what I'm trying to suggest. Rather, in this situation, I don't think calling is going to create a profitable situation, and as such, I'm not in love with it. So as played, we end up facing a 3-bet from Adrian. We end up getting called by this player, and we're getting 3.7 to 1 on a call here, and I definitely don't blame Ate for calling. I would be calling here as well. I don't feel like folding and relinquishing my equity. We're getting a good price, plus we have a situation where we're closing action, which is far better than having people and actions left after us. And as such, I'm totally okay calling here. Of course, postflop can get a little awkward and a little uncomfortable, but it just is what it is. It's a nature of the beast when you make that original prefop call that was probably a little bit too wide. So as played, we go here, check, check, face a c-bet, call, and here we are getting, again, 3.7 to 1 on a call. Now in this situation, Ate does call, and in the write-up, Ate says this, I'm not sure at all about the flop call. I just felt I got too good of a price, so I went for it. Never really thinking I'm ahead here. Now, in this situation, you know, like you said, we are getting a pretty darn good price, so I'm happy about that. I'm definitely going to be calling here, and I do think that we're ahead some chunk of the time. And the times we're not, we have varying amounts of equity, but think about it. Adrian could have things like ace-king, ace-queen, maybe just total nonsense that they decide to c-bet. Pocket could have things that we're ahead of right this moment, like king-queen, maybe something like queen-10 suited or 10-9 suited, possibly. But ultimately, I think there are definitely hands that we're ahead of right this moment, and the times that we're behind, we have, again, equity, both with the backdoor spades, the fact that we have a pair, we could end up binking two pair of trips on the Turner River. So... I think given the pot odds right this moment, we're definitely fine here. Again, this hand, kind of the way it's rolling out, both facing the three bet and then facing the C bet, this is largely boiling down to making sure that we understand pot odds. Are we good enough? Yes or no. And understanding how to estimate equity to some chunk. So as it stands right now, totally fine with this. Turn is a nine. Check, check, check. Okay. River is a brick six. Check, check. And half pot from Adrian, okay, pocket goes away, and now it's our decision to figure out should we call here, instead of getting three to one. Now in this exact spot, Ate decides to fold. And I want to talk about this for a moment because I don't particularly care for this fold. The major questions that I ask myself in this spot is if Adrian had a bigger hand, if Adrian had queens plus, if Adrian had a set of jacks, if Adrian had ace jack, if Adrian had hands like that, why would they have checked the turn? Right. And I think that's really the big issue, because if you think that they would bet the turn with all of those over pairs, top pairs, all the strong hands, then there really shouldn't be a ton of that left in here at this moment. So to me, if I'm looking at this, this really feels like a Hail Mary. I'm just going to try to stab at it with Ace King or whatever nonsense and try to pick the pot up. I don't think Adrian has a real handle enough of the time just simply because the turn check. So in this spot, if I'm looking at it, I think that there's enough second best hands that could be betting here. Do I expect to call and lose this some chunk of the time? 
Sure, I mean, there could be slow-played king-queen. Sure, there could be some slow-played other silly stuff. But I think as a large default, I'm expecting Adrian is going to fire the turn with the strong hands. And as such, this river bet to me feels a little bit lighter. We're getting decent pot odds here. So I'm definitely going to be calling and expecting to win enough of the time. And this is partly a function of it's an unknown and I have no reason to think that they're overly valuey or not bluffing often enough. We're playing five no limits. So I'm assuming that the bluffing frequencies aren't going to be particularly tight and as such there's a higher probability that there could just be random nonsense in here and again the pot odds are good the turn check doesn't make a lot of sense to me and as such I'm going to be calling now I feel a lot of players will end up folding here just convincing themselves and telling themselves the story that Adrian has to have a monster hand a hand that beats them but always think about the previous streets doesn't make sense based upon the way the entire hand rolled out that they're going to show up with those combos in this situation I don't think so and and as such, I'm going to hero call the river. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Ate, hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully this helps you the next time you find yourself in a similar situation. Again, the most important inflection points. Preflop, should you be calling that open in the first place? And really the rest of the hand just rolled out to be a pot odds problem. And understanding how to estimate a little bit better, a little bit of hand reading tweaking, particularly between the turn and river. And then again, everything boiled back to pot odds. Getting great pot odds against the preflop 3 bet, against the flop C bet. And again, on the river getting 3 to 1, I just simply don't see myself folding in that spot. But I'll be totally honest with you, I like to get a little bit sticky, particularly getting 3 to 1. So hopefully again that answers the question. If you guys have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. If you're looking for your next step today and some of this stuff felt a little uncomfortable for you or you don't really know what the heck I'm talking about with the pot odds, I'd like to challenge you to do my pot odds video and quiz. That's really going to make sure it hammers this concept down for you. This is really the bare bones fundamental foundation of poker. If you don't understand pot odds, things are going to be very, very difficult for you. So please make sure to click that link in the description box or use the link on the screen right this moment. Go check check it out. Make sure you pass that quiz. And if you do, you're good to go. And hopefully you won't make this mistake in the future. So again, if you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you guys back soon with a brand new video. And in the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.